Welcome to part three of the repair of this Yesu FT 1000NP Mark V5. Okay, so in the previous videos we rebuilt uh, the RF board or the RF unit. It had a completely blown front end and we managed to get all that working again and we took a look at the tuner unit and we noticed that there was quite a few uh, problems on here i.e relays etc so that's basically where we left off so yeah let's get into it so i'm going to remove this tuner unit by disconnecting these cables here and let's do a bit of further investigation so i've got the tuner removed um obviously i have to disconnect all these cables that is the RX in that goes into the RF board. And I don't know if you can see it, but there's a, there's a little uh, just like a RCA socket and that comes from the PA unit. So we know the, the relay's gone. And the closer I look at it, the more I just sort of see that somebody's been in here before. Yeah, possibly trying to repair it. So. What I'm going to do, I'm going to get this board out. There's another board underneath. I'm not quite sure how they marry together, but yeah, we'll figure it out. So first thing, I'm going to unsolder these, unscrew these uh, SO239 sockets from the back, and uh, we'll see if we can get this board out. As you can see I've got the board uh, separated and it was a little tricky because of, at the back here these tuning capacitors have got little copper stabs on them which actually go through into the circuit board and you have to desolder them to be able to separate this board and I've removed the read relay this is obviously the receive switch uh, relay that uh, obviously engages uh, when it's in receive and disconnects when the radio is in transmission we know we've got a fault with that and i don't know if you can see these but this is uh, that little capacitor um, inductor thingy it is actually a capacitor uh, that was bodged on the back uh, we'll go through that in a second okay so if you're new to the channel and you like this content uh, please consider subscribing or you know hitting the like button as it really helps the channel we're trying to grow the channel so uh, you know thank you in advance for your support okay so let's just have a quick look at this read relay now it's a tc-112nv uh, I know it's a 12 volt device because it says that in the service manual but I can't find any information online about it um, I you know ideally I'd like a data sheet but there doesn't seem to be any information online at all well I certainly can't find it if anybody can shed a bit of light on it then yeah please do so if we take a look at it it's basically a coil wound on a tubular former and what happens is within that tube there'll be a little glass envelope reed switch and it connects from the center pin to this pin here so that's actually our switch and then the two outside pins here are the coil let's just do a quick test on this just to see exactly what it's doing so I've got two leads here, just 
get the right ones. Yeah. Okay, so these little uh, hook leads are connected to the probes, basically. We set to uh, resistance you know, on the meter, and we can just clip on quickly to this one, uh, this pin. Now that's the coil. So we're just getting a little over 400 ohms, 410 ohms on the coil, which kind of looks okay. I'd say that's okay. And if we go across the switch, which is the center pin there. Yeah, so that's the switch. Now we are, yeah, we're getting 1.7 megs, which is wrong. It should be open circuit. And What I've got here, I can actually connect some 12 volts to it from the DC power supply. So let's just hook this on. Now, I i don't think this is, um, you know, sensitive to being, you know, which way round we connect the power. So if we connect it one way or another, you know, I think it will work. But I'll connect it up the same way that it's connected in the radio. So which way was it? Yes. So this side here that's one side of the coil that's the positive and this is the negative we can see it's doing something okay so that's brought the um that's brought the resistance down to two point six kilo ohm 2.7 it is unstable we can give it a bit of a tap you can see oh, it's all over the place and if i switch the power off yeah it's completely shot because that's supposed to be zero ohms when it's switched on or thereabouts there'll be a tiny bit of resistance on it and then open circuit when it's switched off Okay, so if we take a look at the power supply, you can see it's off at the moment. I'll switch it on. Okay, it's drawing, yeah, 30, around about 30 milliamps when it's on, which I imagine, yeah, that looks about right. So what I'm going to try and do is remove the case and we'll see if we can actually get in there and remove the reed switch and possibly replace it uh, it's a bit of a problem because i don't know what the rating of this was but you know we can try uh you know if anybody knows more about these relays yeah please leave a message in the comments because um, it appears that this seems to be quite a common point of failure with this particular radio so um, yeah okay let's move swiftly along so this is the capacitor that uh, I've removed you know it was very shoddily soldered on to the circuit board and Initially, I thought it may, might be an inductor, but it, I've tested it. It's a capacitor, and this little lead here, this is a bit of copper wire I've soldered on simply so I can get it in the capacitor tester. We've got the capacitor in the LCR meter. It's coming in at 95 uh, nanofarads. So I'd say it's a 100 nanofarad capacitor. And let's have a look at the circuit diagram and I'll show you exactly where this was tacked on. This is the tuner main unit circuit diagram. And apologies for the uh, condition of this. This is the best one I could find. Uh, but yeah, we, it's legible. We can just about figure out what's going on. So in the previous video, we looked at this section here. And let's just zoom in on it 
a bit. Now we did go through the theory of operation and how it works in a lot more in depth. So if you know if you're unsure of anything, I would suggest that you go back and watch the previous video. So what is it actually doing? Well, it's quite simple. We've got our antenna sockets on the back of the radio, which is A and B, which obviously are designed to connect to antennas. So it routes the signal. So if we are in receive mode, it will route the signal to this point. And this is the RX out. This is the receive out. And that literally is a connect is a coaxial connector that connects on to the RF unit. And in turn, it's the receiver front end um, connection point and in transmission mode we've got if I can highlight it we've got a coaxial connection here that was the RCA type connector and that connects to PA so it connects the RF power from the power amplifier through to the antenna sockets that's basically it um, so what happens is we've got our read relay here so it, that connects on to this rail here so that's a, basically like a common bus so the transmitter signals go up here and the receiver signals um, come down here and in receive mode this relay switch will close and create a path down here to our receiver front end and if we're in transmission mode this relay will open and we've got a switch here this is using a diode this switch will close and create a path from our PA power amplifier through here to this point and in turn to antenna socket A and B depending on which one is selected if we look at this point so this is for this is a switch and it works on forward and reverse bias so in forward bias it will let the signals pass and in reverse bias it will stop the signals passing and this is controlled by these two transistors here uh, which is in turn controlled by this line here which is our TX8 so when you key the mic this goes high to 8 volts these transistors will do their thing and it will switch this on and it does the exact opposite in receive so in receive this will go low and this gets switched off what is the capacitor doing well it's actually connected at this point here on the um, on the collector of this switching transistor and the other side of the capacitor is actually connected to ground now it's not uncommon for uh, manufacturers to tack uh, additional components onto the back of circuit boards it's not very good practice but it happens um, I know from the time I worked at ICOM we used to get bulletins through uh, regarding certain equipment and what small modifications uh, we would have to carry out to them um, and it could be you know something to do with reliability it could be something to do with performance uh, enhancement that capacitor being tacked on there, we've actually already got a capacitor here. Now, the effect this will have is just to increase the capacitance at this point. So what we need to understand is what this capacitor is doing. Well, because we're actually switching in and out a diode, we're using these two chokes, and it's just to choke off the RF and try and keep it from coming down into the circuit so we've got a set of chokes one side set of chokes the other and we've got if this thing stops binging and we've got this capacitor here and we've got another capacitor there now what that's doing is decoupling so it'll be decoupling the rf down um, to ground and stopping it help 
to stop it getting into these circuits here for obvious reasons because if it gets in there it could cause problems the capacitor I removed um, was 100 nanofarads and this one here is 0.1 microfarad which is 100 nanofarads so we've increased the capacitance at this point now putting two uh, capacitors in parallel will do two things obviously we increase the capacitance we know that but it, what it will also do is reduce the equivalent series resistance now I'm not entirely sure uh, what effect that is going to have and I would have thought if it, if it had come from the factory that it simply changed this capacitor to a higher value so this could well be a mod I don't know I don't know where it's come from it wasn't very well soldered onto the back of the board however you know it's clear that someone has been in here before and has had particular interest in this area so it may be that someone's actually tacked that capacitor on to the back now I'm still on the fence whether to put it back in I need to do a bit more research but yeah that's what the cap is doing okay and if we move over to this relay now that's the read relay and we know that that has failed and what I suspect has happened in transmit mode when we've got our RF signals here this uh, switch on the relay has closed and in turn created a path for the RF to come down and it's done all the damage in the front end that is what I suspect now I think I may have found a bit of a smoking gun and if you remember in the last video I did some tests on the underside of the tuner board and this transistor here which switches our read relay had a voltage of 1.4 volts uh, when we were in transmit mode and what I was concerned about is that this relay may have pulled on that for 1.4 volts read relays don't need a lot of um, current to actually pull them in they they are quite sensitive so I think that this here has gone faulty because we did some voltage checks on it this is a switching transistor and it's got internal resistors it's just for internal biasing so it's the ease of switching and it also you know manufacturers like them because it gives them a lower component count so what is happening well we checked the voltages here didn't we now in receive this voltage will be pulled low because of this resistor here so there's I think that's 2.2 K that pulls this low and if this gets pulled low this is a PMP device this will switch on and it will energize the uh, relay and in transmit mode this line goes high because we tested it I think it went up to 12 something volts and when it goes high this should switch off I did do some counts on these resistors which I'll get to in a second but this should be switching off and I think that 1.4 volts is the smoking gun because it's pulled this in or made it close to pulling in and once it's once the RF because remember this is a 200 watt uh, transmitter that's quite a bit of power and if that's come down through this re re relay it's gone off down into the front end of the receiver and done all that damage that we've spent all the time sorting out so I'm going to replace this transistor here I know I'm going to try and rebuild this read relay if I can't get a replacement so this is the uh, tuner board and as you can see I've got these little leads connected to it so what I'm doing is I'm actually feeding uh, the unit from my DC bench power supply and what I've done this green leads negative so that connects to ground this red uh, lead is the 13.8 volt rail 
and the yellow is emulating the TX8 which is switched off at the moment. So I'm using two banks on the power supply. Okay, so that's low. And if we look over at this section, this is our switching transistor. And if we look at on the emitter, let's see if I can get it on there. Yeah, we've got 13.8 volts. If we look at this, that's the base, that's 2.6 volts. Now remember, the TX8 here is low, so it should be emulating receive mode. And if we look on the collector, that's high. So because that's high, this is where the relay goes. So that's the coil, the relay, the other side of the coil goes to ground. So that relay would be energized. So if we now switch on the TX8, see here yeah we've got eight volts there and if we look at the base of this transistor that's gone high so as that goes high this is a PMP device this should switch off and it's not now before we were getting 1.4 volts or thereabouts and that's when the relay was actually in there so I just say this thing's shot and that's the reason it's different now is just a consequence it's the loading effect of the coil so we need to change this transistor. Okay, I've got these uh, replacement equivalents because I can't get the original Toshiba part. Uh, these are made by On Semiconductor. I got them from Farnell. Uh, they're a SOT23 package. They're slightly different. Uh, at the end of the video, I'll put uh, a section in there and go through the data sheets and yeah, go through how I arrived at getting these. Looks all right for my house. We've replaced the transistor and we've basically got everything set up as we had before. We're basically emulating the power um, as it would be if the radio was running. So what we've got here is our 13.8 volt rail. We've got a TX8, which we can switch in on the power supply. And we've also got the negative coming up to the ground on the radio. Uh, what else we've done is we've managed to get the read relay apart. We've connected that into the circuit using these grabby leads. So any loading effects, you know, we're going to see how this thing behaves. And the meter here is simply reading the voltage that's going into the read relay coil. So at the moment we're in actually we're in receive. So you know that that power supply the 8 volts is switched off and we're getting 13.6 volts um, in you know into the uh, relay which is correct because in that situation we would be in receive so when we key the mic that would go to 8 volts and theoretically should switch this off so let's do that ah Okay, now we can see on here, the voltage has now dropped to 0.84 of a volt. And remember before we were getting 
Now, I'm not entirely happy with that for the simple reason these transistors, these little pre-bias switching transistors, they're basically digital transistors. So they're really designed to be hard on or hard off, you know, so that's it. And if we take a look at the base of that transistor, which is now obviously on this meter, if I can get it on there, come on. Very clever, I'm gonna short it out. Okay, so that's 12.78. So that goes high, this thing's supposed to switch off. Now I've got a feeling that that voltage, 12.78 volts, is slightly too low. So I think we need to take another look at the circuit diagram. So let's just look at this quickly. Um, on the collector of this uh, switching um, transistor, we've got about 800 millivolts, which I think is wrong because that will still allow current to flow through uh, the read relay coil. Now, the idea of these, these transistors, they're pre-biased to work as a switch. So they switch on and they switch off. So what I suspect is the voltage at the base here isn't high enough because of course this has to go high. And it's I think it's only by a fraction, uh, you know, if we get in 800 millivolts here. So this will be a fraction too, um, too low. So if we follow this back, there's a diode here now of course we get a, a a forward voltage a forward you know the voltage drop across the diode so we can actually literally measure that and see what uh, that is and we've also got this transistor here which is i think they're about it's a one amp device and it has to work quite hard because it there's a three watt resistor here and Obviously, it's to go, you know, it's, we want to forward bias this diode here, and it will take a bit of current to do that. So, I can measure the uh, voltage between the emitter and the collector, see what the drop is there. I should imagine there will be a drop, and it will uh, change as the thing warms up. But, um, yeah, this is what we need to check. We just want to see what the voltages are. Let's put this into transmit mode. So we switch this on. Yeah, okay, we're getting 0.78 now. Okay, so let's just look at our voltages. So if we look on this meter, if we have a look at the voltages across that switching transistor, the main transistor that's, that's forward biasing the diode. Yeah, we get about 150 millivolt uh, drop across it which yeah I'd say that's probably okay and if we look across our diode that's we should get a volt drop here if I can get the if I can get it on that is So we're getting 0 0.7, 700 uh, millivolts, which, yeah, that's a bit high. Now, to be honest, I have checked the data sheet for this because that diode is actually, you know, if we, if we calculate it at 13.8 uh, volts and there's a resistor on the cathode side of the diode that goes to ground, which is 2.2K. So that should give us about six milliamps of current. And according to the data sheet, 0.7 is about right. Yeah, I don't like the design of this. I, I really don't like it at all. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change this diode. I've got some other diodes here. Uh, I've, these are the ones I've got in stock. They're a general purpose surface mount type diode. But let's change this. I'm gonna pop that in there and then we're gonna see what, uh, what it's doing. Well, I replaced the diode. It made little 
to no difference and I went away and had a good think about it. Now, I've, just incidentally, I've tested all the components around this switching area. They're all correct. There's nothing wrong with them. So I've come to the conclusion that this is how this thing is. Now, I know there's quite a bit about this, this circuit uh, online. It's quite problematic. And I think it's just a really bad uh, piss poor design um, and I've done something that I wouldn't normally do I've made a modification and if we look at it now obviously we're in receive mode and if we put it into transmit you can see this comes down to 25 millivolts you know or really low that's just basically noise so that's switching correctly now now obviously with these uh, pre-bias switching transistors they're basically digital transistors they're supposed to be on or off they're not supposed to be slightly biased on because I don't think it's going to do them any good if I'm honest because they're, they're not designed for um, you know power dissipation in, in that way um, but yeah it is what it is so what have I done well I've intercepted the 13.8 volt supply to the switching transistor and I've, what I've done I've actually put a diode uh, in series uh, with the uh, emitter of the transistor and, I'm, and the effect of that is that I've actually dropped the voltage so we're at 13.25 the on this side and if we go to the other side it's dropped to 12.85 so what that's done when that voltage comes up to switch, it, it, there's a differential. Uh, so what I've done, I've actually brought the, you know, I've brought the uh, emitter voltage down, and now it's switching off correctly. And this is what they'd expect to see. This is how it should work. So I've just got a feeling that this is how these things are. And I just didn't like it. I just really don't like the idea of current going across that relay, you know, unnecessarily. You know, and I I, I can't see anything else wrong with the circuit. Now, before, you know, we were getting 1.4 volts. I don't know whether that was strong enough to actually pull it in, but we can do a quick test. I can put the relay on uh, the power supply and give it sort of 1.4 volts, see what happens. Now, something else I have managed to find is some glass envelope reed switches. And these are made by a company called Little Fuse. Again, I'll go through uh, what I've used at the end of the video. Um, so they basically look like this. And I measured the dimensions of the one that came out of it. It was actually broken, so I've got pretty much the same dimensions. This is an 800 milliamp uh, switching. Um, there is a, some information in the data sheet that we'll go through. I was obviously a little concerned because there's such a small gap in there, and there's essentially got 200 watts of RF on it. Again, I don't like the design. This could well have been a two-way switch so when it switches over it, you know you could they could have made it so that it takes the um, receive line down to ground but they haven't done that it's just a, just a straight uh, switch uh, as I say they're normally open so because you can get them normally closed as well so but this is normally open and that um, you know we'll, we'll put that in and we'll see how it behaves i have tested it it does it seems to work perfectly okay so now we are connected up as before continuity the reads in there and i'm connected directly to the power supply now we're currently uh, supplying it uh, with 0.79 volts and if we turn this up watch what happens yeah, we get over a volt and it pulls
Now, there's a thing, because there's a, quite a bit to read switches, and they, in the data sheet, it talks about, obviously, magnetic, the strength it, you know, it needs to get it to pull in. Um, but I've got no information on the original part, so I'm stabbing in the dark. But I, I've put this one in, but that's very interesting. Just take it over a vault. Whereabouts is it going to go? Oh, there you go. Yeah. So we were getting 1.4 on the, on the, uh, you know, originally with that Toshiba switching transistor. We put in a new transistor and that's taken it down to 0.8. And at point eight, it's not pulling. So, yeah, it's really interesting. I've never worked on one of these before, but if anybody's got one and they're working on it, it'd be worth just checking what the voltages are. I don't like this. I don't like it at all. You know, this, it, it's pr that's pretty bad. You know, uh, if that's if that's the design, unless I'm missing something, you know. But. Uh, yeah okay well the thing to do now is i'm going to get all this board tidied up with the modification put this relay back together get it all back in its case and stick it in the radio and see if it doesn't blow up again okay so the radio is now back together and basically what i'm gonna do i'll show you we've got a do a continuity test on the antenna socket so that's one side of this is connected to the multimeter I'm on continuity we're in receive mode I've also got the RF shorted out and so no RF can go into the PA let's just put this yeah now if we go to transmit Switch the antenna B. Yeah, put that one on there. Yeah. So we're working. Now I will say this thing is an absolute nightmare to put back together, but uh, yeah, we've managed to do it. And if I bring the camera over, you can now. So you can see the modification. Uh, I've had to cut the track tracks in two parts so I could separate the power. But this is the diode, and this is the uh, it's just the 13.8, which is feeding that big switching transistor. And obviously the diode's switching. It, well, it's not switching. It's dropping the voltage to that pre-biased uh, switching transistor. And I'm going to put a bit of hot melt glue on there just to dab it so to stop vibration. But that is switching beautifully, and I've checked the voltages. It's it's good. Well, it's running under its own steam. We're actually plugged in <laughs> in the proper antenna socket now, and it's working. Now, unfortunately, it's not transmitting. Uh, this is as far as I'm going to go with this video today. So there'll be another. Uh, video I have no idea we're getting absolutely no RF whatsoever so I've got no idea what the uh, the issue is but we'll attack it in the next video uh, I did promise that uh, I'd leave the data sheets information and just go through what uh, you know how I got to the equivalents and what components I've used uh, you know if it comes in useful or you find it interesting it's coming up right after this uh and i if you leave it at this point i just say thanks for watching i really enjoy your support and uh, we'll catch you in the next video so regarding the read relay uh, i found this website which i found quite interesting and it's from a uh it's a japanese radio amateur jr4gpa and I think it's just a blog site actually, so let's we can translate that to English. I'm using Google Chrome. Okay.
and basically what he's saying he's basically had the same problem uh, he couldn't find any information on the uh, unit itself you know this TC 112 NV device and yeah he's basically put one in here it's half amp stroke 150 volt switching uh, yeah he's, this is the one he's put in there and you can see here he's you know he's put some characteristics of the read relay now he's mentioned that this one is nitrogen gas well, I can imagine that means nitrogen gas filled um, I have no idea what's in the one that I've installed we'll just have a look at that in a second but he's had the same problem he, you know he's sort of got the thing can't get a replacement you know and um, he's just found something in his parts box that um, he's put in there and if, from reading this it's, it's all working so you know my concern is you know it's a very small gap we've got a lot of when we're going to transmit we've got a lot of RF power there so if we look on here yeah so this is what I've put in there I've got these from Farnell you can I imagine you can buy them from DigiKey, Mauser and it's a MDSR-7 and it's made by a company called Little Fuse uh, these are 200 uh, volt DC rated at 10 watts that's what they're saying um, but yeah I had to measure the dimensions of the one I, I took out but it was in a really bad state and um, but I, I managed to get some dimensions and this is about the closest I could get to it that that would fit into you know the former um, I did see uh, that I they do sell really high dielectric strength read relays um, but I couldn't get one that would fit inside that uh, inside that unit that's the problem because I, I would have got one now, there's a few things here because you've got this sensitivity uh, range here which yeah will be it's ampere turns but again because I had no information on the original I I've just gone for a complete you know I'm just stabbing in the dark so yeah this is capable of switching 200 volts or half an amp well really it shouldn't be you know when it's in receive there's going to be very little going down there and then in transmit it should be disconnected but the effect it's going to have you know on the, the gap I don't know so you know I would wait for the future videos if you were going to, you were going to repair one of these and just see how this thing holds up but judging by the Japanese website I've got a feeling that this is going to work okay so uh, yeah you can come come down here you can see the characteristics of it again I you know I don't know if this is going to hold up but um, I think the f what's made this thing fail is that you know that transistor the switching transistor I think it's just pulled it in because it's failed and I've re-modified the circuit which I I didn't want to do but I'd rather no current goes through this thing at all when it's in transmit and I've, I've got a nasty feeling that this is a common fault because you would, those diodes in the front end are constantly blowing up on these things on these uh, Mark 5s and I've got a feeling it's, it could well be something to do with this so uh, I don't like the design as I said but you know there it is it is what it is I guess but that's it that's the, what I've used it's little fuse uh, they're just axial uh, lead uh, read relays yeah of course this is normally open they do do normally closed but that's the one I put in and yeah, it appears to be working we'll only really know once we get the RF on there and if we go what was the next thing yes we changed the transistor didn't we so i removed the switching transistor well replaced it this one seemed to have gone faulty and i think this was the the main issue and it's a 2sa 1563 now um yeah they're internally biased we've got a 10k and a 47k so they put it as r1 r2 
and if you come down here you can actually see it inside the case so the base has got a, a resistor on it and then you've got uh, a, a resistor from the base down to the emitter so yeah that pre biases this and if you look at the ratings uh you know collector to base voltage 50 minus 50 because of course everything's in minus here because it's a pmp device minus 50 collector emitter minus 50 six volt and the things we're really interested in is peak collector current 100 milliamps no yeah that's collector current so that's i think that's normal operation and peak current is 200 milliamps and the collector dissipation is 200 milliwatts and i have substituted that for one of these which is an mun 2114 from on semiconductor and i believe on semiconductor that used to be motorola uh, i've never had a problem with the part i've actually got shares in in semiconductor on semiconductor they uh they've turned quite a good profit over the last two years so uh, long may that continue uh okay so yeah we've got the thing here r1 r2 uh, pmp uh, and they've got them it's a monolithic bias resistor network and you can see yeah it's here now if we look at the ratings um yeah so it's 50 volts 50 volts continuous current 100 uh, milliamps which is the same and you yeah, got forward and reverse there's not a problem there that's that's all good i mean it, it says here if you read it the digital transistors because basically that's what they are that's what what it is it's a digital state so it's on or off and that's why i didn't like the idea of it you know sort of being slightly biased on they should be switched off completely um so yeah and the case uh so yeah if you that's an sc59 um and that is the if we look at the dimensions of this one it doesn't say sc59 but i believe sc59 is the correct size now i couldn't get that i've actually put a sot 23 in there which is exactly the same it's just not quite as you know it's not as tall as the other one but it fits on the pads it's, I didn't have a problem with it fitting in I think it's something like 0 0.03 or 0 0.02 of a mil um too you know too long uh too short rather so you know it's, just, it's not quite as tall but that went in that works uh yeah didn't have a problem you can get these anywhere they're in production um i don't like buying uh components especially critical components like this from you know sources that i've got no idea where the, they've come from so if you you know if you buy from digikey mauser you know that you're getting you know what you're ordering basically um you know there's, there's a lot of shylarks out there there's also good sellers you know people there are good sellers on ebay that do have original parts but i can't distinguish what's good and what's bad so i i only buy parts from where i know they're actually what you know, i'm confident that they're actually what they say they are because it, all it does is cause problems and the times i people have brought equipment to me to be fixed say well i've changed the transistor and it's not working you know and it turns out they've just got a, you know it's fake it's dodgy it's i don't know that much about it but i you know i'll get a, i'll stop talking about this because i'm getting a bit carried away aren't i right okay so that that's the transistor i put in there and the diode was just simply it's a 1m148 uh diode uh and if you go down these ones are on semiconductor and yeah this is yeah you've got a average rex 54 current so it's 200 milliamps of course that uh relay coil is only pulling 30 milliamps so yeah this is fine i mean we're only using it to to get the volt drop so it's just completely forward biased <coughs> uh 
and we're just we're looking for that 0.6 of a volt volt drop for that modification now i i don't know how this modification is going to hold up um but um if you have a voltage at that coil i would seriously um consider maybe putting something in there because i don't think there should be any current on that coil at all but you know only time will tell so you know watch this space but um this obviously putting this in here shouldn't be a problem at all but um yeah there we go okay well i'm going to leave it here thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next video adios